Good evening, Advent, and welcome to our evening Vespers service. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us, Lord, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and illumine your church. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy and gracious God, I confess that I have sinned against you this day. Some of my sin I know, the thoughts and words and deeds of which I am ashamed, but some is known only to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask forgiveness. Deliver and restore me, that I may rest in peace. By the mercy of God, we are united with Jesus Christ, in whom we are forgiven. We rest now in the peace of Christ and rise in the morning to serve. This evening's reading is from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice insofar as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory which is the Spirit of God, is resting on you. My dear friends in Christ, I'd like to share a personal story with you, if I may. Josephat Shangala came to Trinity Seminary in the fall of 1982, the same time that I began my Master of Divinity degree program. He came to prepare to serve the Lutheran Church in Namibia. He came by himself. He left his wife and his children so that he could come to the United States to begin this degree program with the assurance that all of the visas would come through and that his wife and children would be able to join him a year later. But that first year, Josephat lived in the single student dormitories where I lived and many of my friends lived. And during those first few weeks, we noticed him being very shy, furtive, almost. Afraid to engage us, afraid perhaps that we might not want to be near or around him in some way. But it took a little bit of time for us to be able to encourage him to come with us in the evenings as we walked across the street to Capital University's dining hall so that we could share a meal together. After those first few weeks, he was a regular feature of that evening ritual, and we got to know him very, very well. We learned about his culture. We learned about the struggles of apartheid in Namibia, his goals to gather the experience and the education and the tools for spiritual leadership so that he could return and lead his people through those difficult days. And at the conclusion of that first year, on the day that his wife and children arrived, Josephat was absolutely elated that he would be united again with his family. Now I do have a sidebar story to tell about him. He came to me because he wanted to get his driver's license and he asked me to help him. And let's just say that it was a challenge to get him to keep his hand off of the automatic transmission stick and stop using the brake as if it were a clutch because he had only driven stick shift in his native country. And all of that, of course, was done for what we understand to be the opposite side of that front part of the car. I don't know that he ever got his license, at least his American license. But uh, those 
in spite of the tentative and the uncertain experiences that were involved, I hold those close to my heart because I'm glad that we had those times to share and to laugh. And so the friendships grew. We all grew to love and appreciate his wisdom, his sense of humor, and his gentle nature. The very last time that I saw him, he was confident, happy, and looking forward to returning to Namibia. One short year later, after he had returned, we learned that Josephat's wife and children were killed in a car bombing. I confess to you that I wanted so much to write to him, and I just didn't even know what to say. When I think of the fiery ordeal in today's reading, I think of my friend. His loss was so much greater than anything that I have ever experienced in my life. And it was on account of his involvement in the church's anti-apartheid movement that that tragedy happened. And I learned just last year that Josephat has since become a bishop. He has remarried and has a family and has the audacious grace to be able to say that God is good. And the manner in which he has reframed his calling and his experiences does indeed reflect the spirit of God resting upon him. There are those among us who hand over their lives, literally, for the sake of the gospel. They have not trivialized their loss. They know the cost of bearing witness to God's gracious spirit in the midst of such devastation. And in truth, they do share in Christ's suffering. May our prayer be this night that we too dare to speak and to act in such a way that God's glory is revealed in and through our witness as well. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out with good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty and merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep us this night and forevermore. Amen. Good night, Advent.